Our first question is brought to us from Parvati. I'm having conflict with one of my employees, but they have been with me for a long time and they have the skills I need to help me. How many chances should I give them? I really don't want to have to find someone new. Uh, good question. Do you, do you have question. a, do you have a, do you have like a initial knee jerk answer for it? For your, from your side, cause you've managed, hired and fired more people than I have <laughs> in the last four years. You, she used yeah. to run, like she's managed multiple companies. I've been building one company for the last four years. She's managed multiple in the last four years. Yeah. And she was the head of, uh, uh, a, a very big like tech firm um, so she was managing like 80 employees at one point yeah, yeah yeah so so I want to hear your answer first on this what do you think oh. so so essentially the, the thing is someone is working yeah. with an employee they have and conflict. they've have they have a conflict right yeah. they made a mistake yeah a few Something times like that yeah a few times and and they don't want to fire them so they're like how many chances should I give before I fire them or mm -hmm. what should I do about it so yeah. what do you think? so <laughs> It's interesting that Arvin says, I, well, it's true. I have had to fire and hire some people. Um, not always 100% my call, but either way, things have to be done. So first off, Pavarti, I would say, ultimately, you should give them one chance. <laughs> Pretty much just one. Because if you are operating, I'm assuming, by yourself, um, and you've only got a small group of employees anyways, it might not serve you in the long run to continue to give people chances when they've overstayed their welcome. A, also known as, you know, they're exceeding boundaries, they're making mistakes that are is detrimental to your business. Um, based on what you're saying, you want to hold on to them because they're an, an, antique, like, an important part of it, but unfortunately I would say that it's not worth it. Something or a person or a situation in your business that is causing you to not have peace of mind, is causing you to worry or stress, I unfortunately, I will say that you should not go through that for any extended period of time. You gotta give them one chance, make it explicitly clear, you know, this is my business, this is my livelihood, this is what I'm building, and I, I'm, I wanna give you the opportunity to be here to build this with me, but you know, if they're gonna put your business at risk by making mistakes that are detrimental to your business, and we're not talking like little mistakes here and there, like I hope you're not making this decision based on the fact that like maybe they had a if bad you day. To put paper yeah. in the printer. Yeah, like don't don't <laughs> don't fire somebody off of minuscule things, but based on what you're saying it seems like it's a it's kind of a big deal circumstance. Can you give an example, Jay? Like so, cuz cuz you know, it be if, by the way, if you guys want, want like direct coaching on things, yeah. then uh, instead of asking contextual questions like this kind of thing happens, what should you do about it? Tell us an exact scenario and say, what would you do? Uh, you'll get more juicier content yeah. from us. But so let's say, give an example of when it is not A big deal? Okay. Yeah. So for to, example- to fire somebody. Yeah, so I'll give you an example from somebody from an, a real lifetime I had to fire somebody. They were um, a part of the, let's say the tech team. So they worked with a small group of like eight to 10 guys and they would consistently be in there talking to, to the different gentlemen about things that were wrong in the business. So something that is very common in startups is mistakes. Because a startup is a, is a new thing, things are being created every day, things are also being torn down every day. It's like, in a, in a, they'll say in a startup, like a year happens in one day, basically. So, you know, we had somebody on our team, it's, we had somebody on our team who was basically just kind of being a, a negative force coming into the office every day saying things like oh this is bad this is bad oh we got to do this again oh man why did why is this a part of our job title blah 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 just like consistent complaining and when he was let's say one of the bigger developers on this small team of guys making a website for example so if you have one person one negative an energy one negative voice in a group of a small team that negative voice will start to become much louder so he will he or she will start to influence the group on a bigger scale so that was an example of one where it was like if you do not nip this in the butt as fast as possible it could spread to other people and start to spread the bad energy that you do not need so, in your business on the ground floor so that's a so that's a scenario where somebody um is like violating a culture. Yeah, violating a culture. What about a scenario where someone does a mistake? Like it's not that they're a bad person. But yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So like, like a financial mistake we're thinking, like an maybe. email. Okay, so for example, someone's on your accounting team and they forgot to send an invoice. You needed that invoice so you could pay you, your bills. Do you cut them now? No. You, okay, so that's you, what I'm asking. Yeah, so either way, you apprehend them once. In the, whenever something happens that is against what you want to happen in your business, you should always apprehend the first time. Hey, here's what's going on. Here's what you did. Here's how I'd like you to do it instead. Yeah. Here's the environment that I want us to create together. 
you have this opportunity to be a part of my business as I'm building it. I want you to be here. I want you to do things better in the future. Here's how we can work together. And then you have an open conversation about what actually happened and what you'd like to see instead. If the, if the energy persists following that first conversation, it's a, hey, can I talk to you for a second? Closed door, this isn't gonna work situation. Yeah. For me, at least. Yeah. I, I think in a startup, it's really, really important. And it's, you can't really, you don't really have the leeway to, you know, give so many chances, especially if they're gonna be detrimental to your business in the wrong run. But that is just my personal opinion. Armin could, of course, have another. What are your thoughts? Are you a more than one chance kind of guy? Um, how about this? <laughs> Read the question one more time. I want to make sure it's crystal clear sure. what we're answering here. I'm having conflict with one of my employees. Conflict. But they have been with me for a long time, and they have the skills I need to help me. How many chances should I give them? I really don't want to have to find someone new. See, it's about conflict, right? Yeah. So that can mean it's a culture issue. It can mean that you're arguing with the person. Yeah. Maybe they're hard to work with. Could be anything. Um, and that... You know, there's a harmony issue. Mm -hmm. that, that's a big deal. So when there's a disharmony um, in the team, that is a huge, that's the biggest issue you could have in a team where there's disharmony. Because yeah. disharmony disrupts the flow of creativity, of customer service, mm -hmm. of work ethic, everything. It literally, imagine a home, like when you're at home and there's an issue between you and someone and the family, it disrupts the entire dynamic of the family. So, um what I'm going to first say is that Jeanette is right in very uh, in, in s certain scenarios because when you reach a certain point, you cannot afford to have somebody that is costing you, that is not willing to like fix it and doesn't care as much as you do. If you have people on your team that care less about getting better than you do for them to get better, then they start to turn into a liability. And really, it's just a sign that they don't want to be there. Yeah. So someone who doesn't want to fix it after the first chance or whatever clearly isn't their desires not strong enough to be there maybe you're doing them a favor by letting them go and yourself because not only is it better for you but they're also they can go and find something that they genuinely care about yeah. that they wouldn't want to keep messing up on so that's one thing however there are scenarios where that method probably isn't the best and in this case scenario i think we're both right i'm just going to give a different perspective on it sure um because um here's my perspective no one in this room would be here if I didn't give a chance more than once, right? We've all made mistakes. True. Made a mistake, made a mistake, made a mistake. I've made a mistake. Even if I didn't give myself a chance, mm -hmm. this business wouldn't be alive right now. Um, and so I think my actions show I am a more than one chance kind of person. Sure. Yeah. Right? So I can't, I can't say, I can't agree with you because um, with like being that way, because clearly I've only shown yeah. uh -huh. that I keep forgiving. So, so here's a, a, a productive perspective on the other side. In a startup, you said mistakes are common. Yeah. Right. So if a startup mistakes are common and your rule is only one chance, that means you'll never have enough time with one person for them to get better. Because what's the only thing inevitable but is mistakes. But small mistakes are very different. Like, depends well, on the well, depends conflict, on the depth. Conflict, of what conflict you're which is what they're yeah, yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. Conflict yeah. is a disharmony, right? True. But in the beginning, well, listen. All I'm saying is when you select a person to be in your team first, do you obviously want to make sure that the only thing that you have to make sure that they have is harmony at least. Yeah. Everything else is learnable. Skills are learnable. Character is learnable. Mistakes can be rede redeemed. You know, there's always redemption for things like this. But if the person has a bad personality is the only circumstance where I don't even let them in. It's not a matter of like if they're on your team. Think about this. Okay. If you're watching this, if they're on your team already, there's a reason. There's a reason why you let them in. You didn't just hire them for no reason, mm -hmm. right? Remember that reason because there was a good reason why they came in. But now it's like it's hard to deal with them. But that's everything. There is not like um, if their personality is amazing, they'll have a deficiency in skills. So that means you got to build them there. If their skills amazing but they're hard to deal with, then that means you got to build them there. Funny enough, this question um, – is coming up at a perfect time because I've only been in the last three, four days, like focusing on just leadership ability and, and how you handle and treat people. And there's a lot of new things I've learned that, uh, that I can answer this question with. So here's the kind of compassion that I learned about a scenario like this. When you have a person who is uh, constantly being an issue or making mistakes, um, and you're like, should I let them go? Should I stay with them? Here's the thing. If you're the CEO of a business, right? 
if you're the leader of the team and you're unwilling to forgive or help this person get better in that way, who else will? So it's like, is it not your job to create an environment or a space where that person can improve those things that they're having issues with? Because if they don't do it with you, they'll just take it somewhere else. So it's like, it's not, I'm not saying it's your responsibility to help this person improve themselves. It's their job. But is it not your job at the very least to create an environment where they can? So it's like, you have to become, as a leader, you have to come, become very accepting of mistakes, of issues and problems from people you work with. Because in the startup, you can't afford to be that strict. Now, if you go into a huge company and their system's already set in place, they have people that have been working there for 5, 10, 15 years minimum, there's already a flow of how things are. There's a standard. You go there and you start you know, misbehaving, having conflicts or making mistakes because you're just careless. In, in that scenario, I understand why you would cut someone after first chance because you, can't, you don't, can't afford it. At that point, you can't afford it because there's already everything set up. Everything's good. So it's just your lack of desire or determination to get good enough to fit into that standard. That I understand. In a startup, in a small team, um, if you're not making like honestly more than $50 million a year in your business, your startup, like you're still starting, you know, you're still your small, medium sized business. In that scenario, the only thing that's going to happen is problems constantly. So your job is to learn how to forgive and improve as fast as possible because your people have to get better. And so I look at my team as a reflection here. Um, and there are many people that have come in, in and out of my business and I've given them dozens of chances. I mean, like on a practical level where they do something, I'm like, this is obviously wrong. They know it. And then we just move on past it. And on a, on a, on a, on like an internal level where I look at it, I'm like, that's not cool, but yeah. I still say nothing. So they don't even know it's a mistake. So there's dozens of chances I've given people. And, um, and it, and like after like dozens and dozens and dozens of chances where I've given them every opportunity possible, I feel like to help them improve. And they still don't. Now I give it to them. Now I, and I don't even get, like, I don't go like, I don't want you here. I more so, I fire them into their own dreams. I go, go and do your own thing. Clearly we're not a good match here. So, um, my personal perspective is unless I feel like I've done everything in my job on my position as a leader for them to help them get better at this or help them solve that conflict or help them solve those mistakes, I don't feel right letting them go. I feel like I could have done better. You know what I mean? So the, the whole point is if you have someone you're conflicted, uh, you're having issues with, it's not a matter of how many chances you should give them. It's a matter of have you done your absolute best as a leader to give them every possible opportunity to get better in this. There's a famous story of um, a, a very popular, uh, a famous pilot who was um, flying back with three passengers to uh, from a show to um, to their to their uh, to the airport, and this old airplane, right? This like classic model airplane. Um, it's like a collectible. It it it, it uh, the engines blow in the air. And because the pilot was so good at flying, it's he somehow f f was able to land the plane, but the plane was like completely damaged, but he saved the passengers and himself. When he got out, he realized that in the plane, in this classic model plane, there's jet fuel put into it, which is the wrong fuel to fuel this plane. So that's what happened, and that's what blew the engine. So he goes to the mechanic, and the mechanic who, who, who fueled the plane before he left uh, flew off, and the mechanic was crying you know, uncontrollably because he realized the mistake he had made almost costed these four people's lives. And the plane, this multi-million dollar plane is now crushed. It's completely uh, gone because he had to crash it to, to land it. And uh, under any circumstance, any person with their, in their, you know, logical mind will look at this person and fire them right there on the spot, right? But this guy, this pilot took a different approach. He believed in showing faith in the people that worked for him by giving them a reward for doing the right things instead of punishment for the wrong things. And scientifically, there has been so many studies done where if you punish someone for doing the wrong things, it is less effective in training than if you reward them for doing the right things, right? So they both are conditioning tools, but the rewarding them for good things and uh, encouragement, it works better than punishment. So what he did as a way to show his faith in his employee is he asked that same pilot that just ruined his model airplane to come the next day and, and uh, work on his plane again, a second plane. So he gave that person a second chance after almost killing four people and ruining his, his multi-million dollar 
you know, classic air, uh, airplane. My point to it is, is this, that person became the most loyal employee to him ever because ever since then, he never forgot that I made this mistake, but I was forgiven. And where else ever will that person be given a chance like that or forgiveness like that? And so your ability, your capacity to believe in your people so much that you can see the good in them, no matter how bad they're being, your ability and your capacity just to forgive and give a space where this person could grow is, I think, the capacity of how great of a leader you're going to become in your business. Um, and this is something that's very hard to do, but that's why I think it's the right thing to do. It's to create a space where people can get better. You have to accept, you have to like be acceptant of people going to have problems. There is no business that's going to have no problems. No leader that's not going to have followers who make mistakes. Nobody. So given that obvious circumstance, that means your capacity to forgive and then give and then work with the person to get better is the capacity of your, your, the greatness of your leadership and how successful your company will become. So in my, my long story short answer, I would give as many chances as possible until that person is better. And that's my job. That's why they're there. Their family is going to condemn them, criticize them for being bad. And that's why they go, that's why they can't go home. Most families, their friends aren't going to do this for them, right? Friends will come and go. Their spouse or partner might not do this to them, but if they can come to work knowing that the person they work with and the person they work for is that forgiving, they'll never leave you. So it's a matter of what's your goal. Do you want to create a culture of loyalty, of long-term relationship, of, of people that are willing to die for you in the, in the mission? That's the kind of leader you have to be. If you're not looking for it and it's more of a small business that's on your goal, then getting rid of people after one chance makes more sense. It's really up to your goal. Um, my personal thing is I want to create loyalty. I want people to be with me for decades. To be that way, I have to be very, very, very forgiving. So much capacity that everyone feels like it's always okay to mess up, to learn, to grow. Armin's not going to crucify us if that happens. He's not going to be angry at us. But see, I still sway off and vol become volatile on this. So I have to keep grounding myself and go, man, if I wasn't given chances, I wouldn't be who I am today. You know, I have mentors that on multiple occasions should have stopped mentoring me because I was probably just, I was being disrespectful. Maybe I was being ahead of myself. My ego was out of my, out of control, but they still forgave me. They still allowed it. They still allowed me to grow. They understood I'm growing. So my response to you is this. It's not about how many chances should I give before this person, before I let them go. More so you ask yourself, um, you know, are you, first of all, are you doing your best to, to know everything? Have you tried everything in your power to help this person understand and learn and grow? Not to tell them they're wrong, but to give them a space where they can feel like they can fix this conflict with you or with whatever. Um, and also just accepting the fact that everyone's going to have problems. It is your job and responsibility to be forgiving, accepting, and creating a, uh, an environment where they can grow. Um, personally, I don't see any other environment as a startup where um, you grow without that. I don't, I don't see a, a, a company succeeding if the person running it is firing everybody at first chance they get. I don't see that happening. I don't see it. Like I said, unless you have an overabundance of people wanting to get into the work, which is usually at a bigger company, that's the only place where I can see you can afford to be that, you know, black and white cut you off just just because you messed up once. But even under those circumstances, how, how many people you meet in corporate that love the company they work for because they're like that? Not a lot. The, the most thriving companies today are forgiving, accepting, and there's so much more humanity in the culture as opposed to, you know, mechanical, like you messed up, you're out. Um, so really just the entire world is moving towards a place where capacity of understanding and forgiveness is becoming more popular than, you know, how many chances should I give you before I let you go? Remember this, the people working for you, they're working for you, not against you. Remember that. So when they make a mistake, they're not here to hurt you. But when you condemn or criticize or you turn around and you, you're like, I got to give you another chance, you make the person feel like they're working against you. And they're spending more time with you than family, than friends, than anything else. If they're working full time with you, they spend more time at work than anywhere else in their life. So you're, at the very minimum, you could at least make them feel, you know, and remember yourself. This person's here because they want to be. They want to help, right? They want to help. Now, if you know they don't, that's, that's the circumstance where I go, you don't want to be here, so I don't want you here. But the only circumstance where I fire somebody is when I feel like they don't want to be here anymore. And I make sure I've done everything in my will to make sure that they want to be here, that they enjoy it, and there's no reason why they want to be here. And if I know that, the, that I've done everything in my power, genuine inside, being honest, that I've made an environment where there's no reason why they want to want to be here and they're still being disharmonious or still finding reasons, 
then in that case I go, you don't want to be here, so you're finding ways to get out. It's like being in a relationship where you're always fault finding with the other person. You're saying they're like this and they do this and they do. Well, if the other person is being absolutely amazing to you and you're still finding reasons why they're not good, that means you don't want to be with them. So you're, you're subconsciously creating issues with them in your mind so you can justify why you should leave. And that's an employee that doesn't want to be there anymore. In that case, the responsible thing to do as a leader is to release them from their misery. Hey, I feel like you don't want to be here anymore. And I've had those kind of let goes. I've had them. And you know what? Those people went on to do bigger things and better things than they were doing with me. But when I know I'm not doing my best and I know I could be doing better and the person wants to be here and there's reasons that I'm the cause of why they're having conflict, I fix that. And if I fix that and they're still like that, then I let them go because they don't want to be here. Not because they're bad. Not because I give you too many chances. It's not like that. It's more forgiving. My thing is, make forgiveness a cool part of your, make it a cool thing in your culture. You know, everyone needs to mess up. The, the only way you get better is if you mess up. The only way you get better is if you mess up. You can't succeed unless you fail. You can't be great at something unless you're bad at it first. So how do you expect to grow a culture or a team that gets better? Every person in this room sucked at what they do now when they started. Every person. Iman couldn't even talk to me about two parts of a funnel when I first, he didn't even know who Tony Robbins was. And I'm in the industry of Tony Robbins, right? Isaiah had no idea how to just take a simple uh, font and put it at the top of a video on Kino. He didn't even know what Kino was, right? Lauren didn't know what different types of copy was. She just, she just wrote blocks. So she didn't know you could sell through copy. Like there's, there's so much, like some words she, like, you know, she didn't even understand uh, or know what it was, right? And, and Jeanette came with a ton of different experiences. I had to relearn, re-engineer how Jeanette looked at uh, managing people and like product productivity. Like everyone sucked at it. I, when I started, I was terrible, you know? I was terrible. Everybody is bad when they start. So expect them to make mistakes. Expect their not conflict with harmony. That's different. But that's, I already told you the, what to do with that. But yeah. mistakes? What do you mean? Like that's the part of growth. Like you're all supposed to make mistakes and learn. It is not the mistakes that define whether the person should be there or not or who they are. It is the response to it. It's how they handle it and how you handle it that determines the success of your business. Varti, huge points there. Huge, 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 right? If we're talking conflict, I think my answer might be a little bit more in, like aligned. I agree if we're with talking you. if it's like, if we're talking like mistakes, small little mistakes, even big mistakes, even big mistakes, sure. I'm talking about mistakes though. In are, general, yes, yes, yes. Mistakes are necessary. Are the, are the yeah, of course. They're learning. They're create the a, learning ground. Create a culture where it's okay to make a mistake. Yes. is what I'm trying to say. But conflict, this creating different. conflict, Pavarti. If they're coming through and creating conflict, it's a different. It's a different. It's a different ball game there. Can, there's a. There's an eight. There's an. Uh, <laughs> there's an old age proverb. If they cat. <laughs> if the cat is bigger than the poop, you can keep the cat. Okay? But if the poop is bigger than the cat, the cat must go. Okay, Pavarti? It's a it's a super wise proverb. Remember that. <laughs> and I'll be I'll give you a personal example. I know I'm hard to deal with at times. So I know I'm the cause of conflict in my team with somebody. I know that. As soon as I know that. I own it because my ego doesn't let me in the moment. Eh? In the moment, you have to kind of defend yourself. Everyone becomes defensive. But after when you think, when I reflect, I go, man, I'm the problem here. Because I remember, I remind myself again, no one here is working against me. They're working for me. They're working for the vision, for the goal. So what the hell is my problem? Why, why am I creating a, an issue with this person? Or I become unbearable to work with. Have you ever thought about that? See, most people, most leaders turn around and say, if I only had good people. <laughs> well, the people are turning around and saying, if I only had a good leader. That's true. Right? Like, it's like, how do you not know you're the cause of conflict, right? So a good way to find this out is asking openly with no ego, feedback. Hey, what's the problem? Look, me and um, a few members of my team last week had a very open discussion about how I am and how it's hard to work with how I am and how some parts of my personality make it very difficult to cooperate with me in certain scenarios. And I'm like, True story. I didn't know this. And funny enough, ironically, I was being exactly the way they're saying I'm being in that conversation about how I was being. So it wasn't until I walked away, I looked at everything, I go, man, I'm like this. <laughs> it's actually terrible. If I worked for me and I was like this, I, w I would be exactly acting like them. And then like, it's just the awareness. Like I'm saying they're like, like 
I, I almost become humble. Like I could almost cry out of like how grateful I am because I think they're still here, still dealing with me, still being courteous and, and respectful. And I'm like, and I'm, and I'm giving them every reason to have an ego with me or an issue with me. So I'm like, I'm the cause of conflict in this scenario, right? Because why would they in the right mind come if I was being a great person to them and to everybody? Why would they come and do that? They're not. So no one in my team has their own ill intention. That's how I know first, right? And you got to make sure of that in your team. But I'm like, man, I'm the cause here. And it's like, and the only reason why it's lasted this long is because I'm, I'm the, I'm the owner of the company. So everyone just feels like they have to agree and, and respect. And I'm like, man, I don't want that. I don't want, I don't want to, that, that kind of, that's a BS kind of culture. You know, it's all BS. Like everyone's just lying to each other. I don't want that. That awareness is the first step. Like maybe you got to change. Remember your people are a reflection of you. Okay. Your business is a reflection of you like a mirror. If I, and I remember this early on in the beginning, I had to get rid of, like a lot of people came and went. I had no one from the first couple years of my business that worked with me is here today. Right? So the first, you know, in the last four years, in the first two years, no one that's there is now here today. You know why? Because in those years I dealt with a lot of issues and I, and I put it into my people and then my people respond to me in this way. And I'm like, why are they like this? It's all messed up. And I realized I messed up. So it was unfair to blame others for it. Because I either allowed it to happen in my culture or I was the instigator of it, okay? One simple, one simple example is I love humor, but there's two types of humor in this world. There's the type that is at the cost and expense of other people, and there's a type that is, is neutral and beneficial to everybody. And I grew up in a family where the funniest type of humor was at the expense <laughs> of other people, ridiculing them, making fun of them, and I was really good at it. So me in introducing this type of humor in my culture, my team, opens doors to everybody thinking it's okay to do it with each other. And so when I get into a scenario where either I am now the victim of the humor or someone is the victim of someone else's humor and I'm watching and I feel ill about it, I'm like, that's disrespectful. We shouldn't be doing that. I'm like, do I blame them or do I just take responsibility knowing I'm the one who said it's okay? Because if I never do that, if I've never done that and someone in my team does it, now I know they're the trigger there. I'll put them aside, I'll talk to them, whatever, and I'll be like, you know, why do you do this? And they'll probably have the same revelation I did, which is they came from my family. My point is that one example, if they're having con- if they're having conflict in the team because of something I started, that's my fault. I don't give a- the other people a chance. So it's like first manage yourself. Make sure make sure you're aligned with everything and then look at the person and say, what's, what's the deal there? Anyways, we can move on to the next question, but you know, my answer, as many chances as possible if you're starting out and uh, remember, your job is to forgive and to help them improve. And if they want to improve, you should give them every opportunity to. If they don't, you'll feel it, you'll know it then. In that case, you have a conversation about you don't want to be here, do something else, right? And that's not about you're not good enough for me. It's more so I don't think you want to be here. So what's your goals, right? Yeah. And if their goals are to be here, then every chance you get, give them to improve. Because how else are they getting get better, right? Your capacity to forgive and love your people no matter what is how big you're gonna go and how loyal they're gonna be. In a scenario where you're much bigger and you can afford to, you just need someone to get the job done, which is still very limited leadership in my idea, in my perspective, then letting them go off the first chance is like what you do, it's very corporate. Or if their personality, is they're deliberately being an issue, yes, that person needs work on their personality, you cut them off after don't let them say it because it'll pollute the environment of the rest of your people. But that's not a mistake. That's conflict of personality. Yeah. But conflict usually starts with one person. And in a team environment, the leader is always the cause first. Always.